What's a small act of kindness you were once shown that you'll never forget? Story one. When I was young, 19, I lost my wallet and someone used my license to rack up tickets. It was pretty obvious once courts looked at the location of the tickets and what vehicle was used, the signature, that it wasn't me. I had to go to around three courts clearing it up. The third judge was the only one with a problem. He said I had failures to appear since the tickets were ignored. I explained what was happening and how I've been dealing with this, and I came in as soon as I was made aware of the issue. He wanted to put me in jail because he didn't trust I'd be back. He wouldn't look at my paperwork because it was an arraignment. He would only look at it during the trial date. I didn't know what to do, but I had the name of the public defender memorized. I asked if I could talk with her first. He called her in and said, this young man seems to know you. I quickly explained what was happening and showed her my evidence. She told the judge that if he didn't release me to come back, she'd pay my bail out of her own pocket. He scorned me, but released me. I just had to return the next month during the trial date. I was 19 then, 39 now. Story two. I recorded a homemade album with my garage band in high school and handed out a few CDs. A few weeks later, my English teacher approached me with five pages of notes on what he liked and what I could improve on. He apparently got the CD from someone at the high school and listened to it all the way through. It was over an hour long. He didn't know I was the singer and guitar player until he asked the person who gave him the CD. He said that if I ever got a shot in a studio, I would create something amazing. Thank you to all the teachers out there who believe in their students. It makes all the difference to some of us. Story three. During the single most difficult time of my life, a stranger on Reddit gifted me $500. To me, it was a fortune. I received it while at work and just broke down. It started the change of my life, and a few months later I was able to move, met my now fiancé, had my son, and found my job. I still message them once in a while to update them on my life and continue to thank them for their generosity, but I think they abandoned their account years ago. Edit. You all have inspired me to write them another message. It's been a while. And a shout out to everyone who has or wants to do something similar. I hope you understand how earth shattering in the best way possible those kind of gifts can be. Story four. So there was this one time in the 1990s. I was helping my brother move from a teaching job after college. This was in the middle of nowhere in the upper peninsula of Michigan. He was driving his little pickup truck pulling a trailer and I was driving my crappy little Ford station wagon packed to the gills with his stuff. It was a Sunday. I'm driving along and my car just passes away. No warning, nothing. I coast to a stop on the side of a rural highway and wait for my brother to realize I wasn't behind him anymore and turn around. After about 20 minutes, he finds me, the hood up and neither one of us knows very much about cars. Soon, though a man from the house we broke down in front of comes out, takes one look at the engine and says, timing belt. We inquire about getting the car towed the 30 miles to the closest large town and realize that it was going to be an expensive repair, even if the engine was okay and not ruined. This man, though, he takes on look at the situation, sees two broke kids in their early 20s just trying to get by in life, and he says, well, it's Sunday. Nothing's going to be open, I tell you what. My next door neighbor is a mechanic. Let's push the car down to my driveway and we'll see what we can do. So that is exactly what we do. His neighbor calls his buddy at the auto parts store, which is closed on a Sunday, who does a favor and gets the parts needed, drives them 30 miles out to the house and well sit around telling stories while the car gets fixed. This man's son, a kid of about nine or ten, is hanging around. He's extremely bored. There were no kids nearby his age, and he's craving any kind of interaction, even with two guys in their 20s. The kid goes, want to see my treehouse, and points to the woods out back. My brother and I look at each other, shrug, and say, sure. We end up spending two hours with this kid, helping him build his treehouse. When we are done, we go back to the house and the car is all fixed. My brother and I have maybe $60 in cash on us, combined, and try to pay the man who did the work, but he refused. He said, no, you boys were in need of help and I wanted to help. You don't need to pay me. Plus, you kept my son occupied for several hours, which I truly appreciate. He then says, I want you to do something for me, though. The next time you see someone in need of help and you have the means, I want you to repay this favor, and that is one of the rules of life I live by, taught to me by a generous man in the middle of nowhere who helped me out when I was in a time of need. Story 5. I have two moments that I'll never forget. When I was younger, my mom was depressed and we had very little money. It was either heating or eating a lot. An old lady around the corner from us would invite us over for tea sometimes or breakfast before school. 
She knitted me, my baby sister and my mom cardigans, socks and a blanket each one winter when it was really bad. I was at a terrible time of my life at 17, had a bad day at work, and then my train home was one hour plus late. I just started crying at the train station and was really wondering if it was all worth it. A woman just held me for bit while I cried. She was a complete stranger. I've never seen her since, but I needed her, I guess. I think she saved my life that day. Story six. Choking to death on a roadside and a nice guy stopped and did the heme lick on me. Thanks, bro. Edit. More details for those asking. Leaving a park with my son. Put a hard candy in my mouth, said something to my son. Candy slipped down my throat. Immediately knew I was messed up. Couldn't get air. Threw the car in park, left my son wondering do TF. Started flagging down people on street. Guy and his girl stopped. Cow started to go dark. Made universal choking sign, guy understood. I could tell he wasn't sure what to do, so I guided his hands to correct position. After four or so heaves, the candy popped out. I gave him a big hug and we went our ways. Scariest moment of my life. Not dying per se, but dying in front of my son. Story seven. I was around six years old and went out to ride my bike. My parents were behind me walking and I was going ahead and coming back to them every five, ten minutes, but I forgot to turn around and realized I am lost, so I started crying after some unsuccessful attempts to find them. One kind man, probably in his 60s, stopped and asked me multiple questions about what happened and who were my parents. It turned out that he knew my grandpa. He contacted him, got my parents' numbers, and called them. They decided where to meet, and after 20 minutes, we were there. I was so happy and relived and thanked the old man. He lives in the block of flats, as my grandpa and I sometimes help him by carrying the groceries or fixing something in his house. I would never forget this act because things could have gone wrong for me. Story 8. When I was 10 plus slash, played Little League. When the team won a game, everyone would go to the dairy barn for an ice cream cone to celebrate. Had a Nazi coach one year who determined that if you didn't play in the game, you didn't get an ice cream. I didn't play one game that we won. I wasn't very good anyway. But still, I went to the dairy barn just to hang with my friends. Others usually went home. The lady server asked me what I wanted, and I told her that I couldn't have one because I didn't play in the game. She gave me a funny look and went on to the next customer. Later, as we were sitting at the outdoor picnic tables, this same lady came out and gave me a huge ice cream cone. You're still a winner, she said and walked away. I still choke up a little when I think about it. Story 9. I've posted this before, but I had finally decided to get out of my abusive home. I went to my college's financial aid office to see if I could qualify for a dorm. I was $50 short. I remember looking at the ground trying not to cry. I had finally gotten the courage up to leave, and I still couldn't do it. The financial aid lady touched my shoulder, looked me in the eyes, and said, I believe you, it was the first time anyone had flat out said they believed I was being abused. She took out her own credit card and paid the last $50. She went with me to sign the lease and to get the key to my dorm. I stood with the key in my hand and realized I was getting out. I was going to be free. I broke down, she hugged me, and told me to pay it forward eventually. I have no idea what her name is, but to the woman at Dixie College who took a chance on me, thank you. I pay it forward by speaking at therapy groups about how to choose not to be a victim and by sponsoring those who are in similar living situations as I was. Edit, wow, I will try and answer all your questions individually, but it I miss you. Here are the answers to the most popular ones. First and foremost, if you're being abused, tell someone. If they don't believe you, go to the next person. Go until you find someone who believes you. It took 22 people before I found someone who believed me. If the person you want to tell is me, that's fine, but tell someone. There is power in speaking your truth. Second, only because I no longer live there, I will say that yes, this was in Saint, George, Utah. I no longer live there because while I did get out that day, my abuse wasn't suddenly over. I moved far enough away that I felt safe and started from the ground up. Third, I've gotten DMs questions on how I teach people to not be victims. It's hard to describe it into a few sentences, but it boils down to choice and to mindset. I am a survivor. You can be too. Fourth, a couple people in my DMs stated that I deserved the abuse or that I was using the fact that I help people deal with their trauma is just my excuse to not deal with my own. No one deserves to be abused. Also, I never claim to be a therapist or a doctor. I am just someone who talks about her individual experiences and how I still live a functional life despite it. I will forever and always be someone who, when needed, someone can come to. Fifth, yes, I am writing a book on my experiences. It's called Walking on Broken Glass Slash Walking on Shards. I haven't decided which, but when I'm done, I'll promote it in here. Sixth, there seem to be two camps of thinking on Reddit one, 
where you don't thank people for awards and one where you do. I tend to try to be polite, so thank you. Story 10. I was trying to fly internationally for the first time to visit a friend in the UK in spring 2010. You know that year that the volcano erupted and you couldn't fly into or out of Europe for quite some time? I rode up to Chicago on the train not knowing if I was going to have a flight or not. It was just all kinds of extra stress on top of the stress of trying to travel internationally for the first time. Ultimately, I didn't get to go. Flight got canceled shortly before boarding. The airline gave me my money back, and I just hopped the train back home. But the flight was still scheduled when I got to O'Hare, so I checked in and went to sit at the gate. Couldn't eat, trying to read with a tear-stained face that most people were ignoring. This older couple came and sat right next to me at a time when the waiting area was pretty much empty and simply began a conversation. Husband and wife, trying to get home to Amsterdam, had been stranded in the U.S. for days, but came and talked to me. Didn't acknowledge the state my face was in, but they knew anyway. They didn't have to, and it was some very small kindness after a really rough day. I'll remember those folks and their kind, distracting conversation for a long time. Story 11. So once in high school, I ate at a Mexican restaurant and unknowingly threw away my car keys on my tray when I was done eating. I went and asked a worker if he had cleared them off the table, and he said no, but that he had just taken the trash out to the dumpster. I remember going outside and calling my dad to ask if there was a spare, and he told me no. So I went back inside feeling humiliated and about to ask if I could look through the dumpster only to see that this man had already dug through the dumpster on my behalf and ended up finding my keys for me. He just went above and beyond, and to this day I am so grateful for his help. Story 12. I transferred in the middle of first grade to a school that did ice cream Fridays, where you'd pay like 50 or 75 C for whatever kind, and then you'd watch an educational video in the classroom. I was unaware of this when the first Friday rolled around so I didn't have any change, and neither did the kid next to me. Normally there would be a few who didn't get ice cream, but this day we were the only two. So the teacher called the both of us aside and gave us each the change required to have our ice cream. I think the biggest thing was that she didn't do it in front of the other kids, so it looked like we had brought the money all along. It was incredibly kind of her. She was a wonderful teacher outside of that as well. Story 13. I was around 19 years old in my first year of community college. My dad has lost his job and my mom was supported my entire family. We were struggling for a while. I remember being in my night class one day starving. I figured there'd be no dinner, so I told myself I'll go straight to bed when I get home and not think about being hungry. When I got home after class, there was a giant box of Costco pizza on the kitchen counter. Apparently one of our neighbors had bought it for us because my dad fixed a part of her fence a few months back. I think it stuck with me because A, I was so flipping hungry and B, the chances of her bringing food that night of all nights was insane to me. It might sound so stupid, but I'll never forget it. Edit, holy cow. Thanks to everyone who commented with your own similar stories and wished me well. I was not expecting this, and I appreciate all the kind words. I'm doing well now. Hope you all are, too. Love to all. Story 14. I missed my train to go home for Christmas from uni due to a crash near the station. I was completely broke and knew I wouldn't be able to afford another ticket. Life just got on top of me knowing I'd have to spend Christmas alone in my poor student house and not being about to see my granddad who was in rapidly declining health. I was bawling my eyes out on the platform when a janitor appeared out of a hidden stock room under a stairwell and brought me some tissues. He found out why I was so upset and said leave it to me. Took me to the customer service desk and got them to reissue me a ticket for the next train home. I was so thankful I started bawling again and he went on his way. Then just before I was about to get my train, he found me on the platform and gave me some snacks and a can of cola, and it's just the nicest thing anyone's ever done for it. Story 15. After the recessions and our houses foreclosure, my family and I were homeless during the summer between my fourth and fifth grade in school. When school started back up, I went to live with some family friends who clothed, fed, and loved me as one of their own. Not only that, a few weeks before moving in with them, one of my mom's co-workers heard about our homelessness and secretly organized a fundraiser for my parents out of the state park they were living in. Along with about $1,000, they got me a book bag filled to the brim with all the school supplies I would need for the year. Still brings me to tears thinking about. I just graduated high school this May, and I'll never forget it. Story 16. Move from a city to the country. I bought a large metal wine rack at a yacht sale without thinking of how I would get it home. As I stood outside my car measuring, 
Knowing Ono well it wouldn't fit, an older man came up to me. He asked if I needed help getting it home and offered to follow me in a hose truck. I thought, okay, I'm getting robbed, but it was only $40 and I couldn't get it home anyways. The older man followed me home and helped me bring it into the house. We talked for five minutes or so, and as he was about to leave, I asked him, I just have to ask, what made you do this today? The man extended his hand to shake mine and said, just doing my good deed for the day. I was floored. I'm never moving back to the city, and I see this sort of kindness all the time where I am. Story 17. I burnt my hand bad pretty bad at work. I was dropped off at an urgent care by a co-worker. I was sobbing barely able to talk because of the pain. The receptionist was extremely rude to me. I had an older man who was waiting on his wife come help me with everything, taking my wallet out of my purse for me. I had to wait a while before I was seen. He sat next to me, told me little funny stories about his grandkids. He even had me hold his hand and squeeze it tight to try to take my mind away from the pain. When I was finally called back, he wished me well. I think about him sometimes. He didn't have to do that, but he saw that I was in pain and wanted to help. Edit spelling. Story 18. I was in a very abusive relationship at 19 that I wasn't fully aware of at the time, and living with the guy. I'm at work and realize I don't have any money for food, and was just asked by management to stay late. So I called my BF and told him I had an unopened check waiting for me at home and asked if he would bring it to me at work so I could cash it and get some food on my break. He was unemployed at the time, so it didn't seem like a big deal to me, but he said he was out with friends, re, drunk at a bar, and wouldn't leave, so I would just have to figure it out. This was before Venmo and Cash App, so I couldn't ask him to send me money either. I was so frustrated and complaining to co-worker about what a jerk he was, and a woman overheard my story and offered to buy my lunch. I pleaded with her not to give me any money because I didn't want to sound like I was scamming or anything. It also happened to be Mother's Day, and she insisted that as a mother, she wouldn't want her kids to go hungry so she couldn't bear to see another kid in that position with no one to help. It was only $10, but I still hid in the bathroom and cried. I don't have a mom, so it was pretty overwhelming at the time. Story 19. Last year, my son and I went to Lowe's to buy his grandpa a candy eater and a certain attachment that goes with it. Grandpa is a little older and slower than he used to be. But he does a lot for us, so we wanted to spend a little money to help make his life a little easier. As we get there, there's only one of the attachments left that we wanted. Well, there was a guy there getting it down for another customer. My son looked devastated. He knew how much his grandpa had been wanting this stuff, and we were going to surprise him with it. My son looked at me and quietly said, That's the last one. What are we going to do for Pa now? Well, the guy overheard and saw the look on my son's face, so he casually handed it to me and said, I think Pa needs this more than I do. I'll just get an IOU from the store. It was such a small moment for this guy, but it's one of those things that you witness that will literally help shape my son and his view of the world. After that, the saying, it takes a village, didn't mean what I thought it meant every time I'd heard it before. Instead, it just made me realize that society as a whole is impacting all these young people in so many ways, and most of them don't even know it. Story 20. I told my coworker I just really missed home, and most of all, a home-cooked meal. I was 19 and moved away from home for the first time to a big city for a job opportunity. I'd never been away from my mom before, or even been alone for longer than like two weeks. I could cook basically nothing, and everything I did was just missing something, so mostly lived off takeout and microwave meals, which I was starting to get really, really sick of. I just wanted a nice meal made with love and fresh ingredients. Anyway, I told my coworker that, and the next day she came in with five homemade meals in containers for me to eat for the next week. The day before, she conjured up a conversation about allergies, which I didn't even think was anything more than a usual conversation, until the next day. It made me cry, and she didn't understand why I was so overwhelmed and surprised, because it was just something she did every day but for her own kids. I don't think I will ever forget it. It was truly just so, so sweet, and the meals were so good, so comforting. Truly tasted like they were just made by the hands of loving parent. Story 21. I was working in a medical field, and after the course of a few days, I worked with four members of this family, starting with the dad, who was just an awesome human. Then the next day, he came in with his son. Later that afternoon, he came back in with his son again for his daughter's apartment. I genuinely fell in love with this family more and more after each member I met. The father, son, daughter attended the mother's appointment with her the next day. At this point, I was considering proposing to the son, 
as I wanted to be a part of this amazing, hilarious, loving family. I informed them I regretted I wouldn't be there when they came back in two weeks, as I was moving on to a different position. They came back an hour later with a nothing bunt cake, with the sweetest card and an inside joke written on the outside of the cake box. It made me cry. My family life has always sucked, and meeting them was just so beautiful and healing. Edit. Thank you kindly for the award. Story 22. I was going to be late for my flight out of London, and I couldn't miss it. I really needed to get home. I couldn't afford a taxi as I spent my last money on the ticket. Random young Muslim dude gave me the cab fare and $20 and said, You remind me of my mother back home who I miss very much. He hugged me and left. This was at 4 a.m. I was baffled. The guy is an angel. Also posted on Twitter, I didn't have any money for my insulin that month, and a kind older lady asked what kind I used. I told her and she said, My husband passed away and had five bottles of that kind left. I will mail them to you. God bless both these people for their kindness. Story 23. I think I've told this story before, but years ago I had the norovirus and was so sick I thought I was going to pass away. My dad took me to urgent care and the first doctor that saw me acted like I was being dramatic and gave me a pill to take. I couldn't even keep a sip of water down to take the freaking pill. Went, went back and insisted on seeing a different doctor. In walks this tiny Muslim woman, and the first thing she does is take my face in her hands and say, Oh, you poor thing. I immediately started to cry. She gave me some shot in the hip and suppositories, and I immediately started feeling better. I will never forget her kindness. Story 24. When I was a lad, about 14 or 15, I was rushing home to make my curfew. My bike wheel slipped sideways, and I crashed my bike quite badly and messed myself up a bit. My wedding tackle got the full crossbar treatment. I gashed my elbow and took a blow to the head. These were the days before helmets. A random couple picked me up and collected up my bike, went to a phone box and called a taxi for me, then paid for the taxi to take me the remaining five miles or so home. My parents went from, what times do you call this, to, you're going to hospital in a heartbeat. Turns out my injuries weren't too bad, but without random strangers, I've no idea how long I'd have been, say, at the side of the road before I started the walk home. Thank you, random strangers. Story 25. As kids, my younger brother and I spent our summers at day camp. My brother was probably five years old and had a tendency to hold his pee all day until we got home. One day our mom was running late on picking us up and he wet himself. I remember being really embarrassed and unsure what to do. Luckily, one of the camp monitors was quick to help and get it cleaned up so that no one noticed. He then lent my little brother an extra pair of his shorts to change into. The monitor was a big guy, so he took a shoelace out of his own shoe to tie his large basketball shorts around my brother's tiny five-year-old waist. I still remember how nice and reassuring, even to me, the embarrassed older sister he was that day. Story 26. I've always struggled with my appearance, but it peaked one day when I saw myself up close on video for the first time in about a year. I thought I looked awful, and I lost all self-confidence. Extreme, and a bit silly, I know. I stopped putting any effort into my appearance for a while and went outdoors only in sweatpants and t-shirts. Then one day my best friend had her birthday party. I thought it'd be rude to her to show up looking like a slob. So for the first time in a while, I curled my hair, put on a dress, and did my makeup. As I was walking home, I passed a couple and presumably their daughters, probably four and six, seven. As we, we passed each other, I saw the younger girl staring at me, and then she exclaimed, Whoa, look! Wasn't she beautiful? I walked around a corner and actually cried a little. Children are so brutally honest, and knowing that somebody's first reaction to me was beautiful was a type of encouragement I've never felt before. That comment still sticks with me, and I think about it when I start doubting my appearance again. Story 27. As a young man, my social skills were suboptimal. That made for a lot of very lonely times in college, especially in the dead of winter in a rural northern community. Anyway, one day I met a really sweet girl who could see past my horrible flaws and insufficiencies. We got to talking and discovered that we both wanted to catch a lecture that night, but neither of us had anyone to go with. We spontaneously decided to go together. The speaker was really interesting, and afterward, we walked around in the snow, talking about a lot of things and nothing in particular. Although we lived on different sides of the campus, we agreed to meet for lunch the next day. At the appointed time, she greeted me and handed me a brown paper bag. It contained a multicolored doctor, who length hand-knitted scarf. The previous night, she'd noted how cold I was and decided to spend her night making a gift for me. No agenda, romantic or otherwise. Just here you go, I hope you like it. Awkward as I was, I didn't even know how to begin to thank her. 
That scarf became my trademark. I wore it for years. OP, thank you for giving me the opportunity to access this treasured memory. And thanks to everyone who read this and shared it with me. Story 28. While backpacking around Seizha, I was super hungover after going to a full moon party in Thailand. I'm pretty sure I was spiked at some point, as was full-blown blackout for a few hours before my friends found me in our hostel. Anyway, I was walking to get some water and trying to shake out the cobwebs and bumped into a guy we'd met in a bar the night before. I explained how much of a state I was in and was feeling super anxious after getting so the night before. He was going to meet up for breakfast with a girl he'd met the night before, so said I could use his hotel room for the day. Just give me the spare key and said he'd meet me back at the bar that night. I nearly burst into tears right there on a crummy tie street. Was able to have the first warm shower in nearly a month, a soft bed to nap in, and a private room with aircon and Wi-Fi, so was able to call my SO back home. Honestly, it's one of the nicest gestures I've ever had from someone who was pretty much a stranger at that point. Story 29. When I was a 14, my sister kicked me out the house. It was dead of winter. I had been walking the streets a couple hours cold and wondering what I was going to do. A cop stops me and then another squad car rolls up behind him. Ask what I was doing walking around late at night and I explained the situation. The cop told me to get into the car and they drove me to a motel and paid for a few days to get me out the cold. Showed back up an hour later with some other cops with groceries so I can eat in a bike so I can get around. Edit. I have never had so many upvotes. I know small in comparison to most, but still cool to see. Thank you. Wow, tie much for the gold anonymous user. Greatly appreciated. And first time over 100 votes. Man, you guys are awesome. Thank you all for showing love. Story 30. The summer after my ex-wife tried to terminate me, I was on vacation with my family and my kids. My dad went with me to one of those old-time photo places because I wanted some shots of me and the kids. The photographer was cute, and after the photos were taken, I flirted with her a bit and my dad jumped in, shut me down, and told me I had no need for another woman after what my ex did to me. He then proceeded to tell her, in detail, what I had survived. I immediately left with my kids and left my card on the counter. I was too humiliated to go back to the photo place, but my mother went and picked them up. The photographer had framed them without charge, and about a month later, when I was hanging them, I noticed something through the back of the frame. It was a sticky note on the back of the picture of just me that said, We aren't all bad. Keep your head up. It's my favorite picture of me, despite the fact it's a silly Victorian-style photo. Story 31 I was holidaying in Europe and extremely late for a train to the airport. My suitcase was almost my size and just as heavy, I was really struggling with it. My train was arriving and I was at the very top of a long flight of stairs, out of breath and exhausted. I put my suitcase down, paused and took a deep breath trying to gather myself a little before this trip down the stairs. A man, maybe late thirties, had walked a few steps down the stairs, stopped, turned around, looked at me, and then at my luggage, and then kindly nodded his head at me. He took a few steps up towards me, picked up my suitcase, and slowly walked ahead of me. I followed. At the very bottom, he put it on the ground just as my train was arriving and kindly nodded his head at me once again. I thanked him. What a lovely man, I'll never forget it. Story 32. I was working at a liquor store late at night. I suffer from very severe depression, and that night I was feeling to the sky. I pushed through to work, though. In came a man I never saw before. Most customers are regulars, so I knew them all. He purchased his items and left. I went about my business. Twenty minutes later, he walks back in looking exasperated. He approached me and said, don't do it. I was floored. I was unable to speak, completely in shock. He continued, I have a daughter about your age. I can see in your eyes that you are very sad. Please don't do it. I immediately started crying and thanked him profusely. I never saw him again. I truly think he was an angel meant to protect me. I've struggled a lot since then, but I'll never forget that man and his kind words. Story 33. The day that my significant other passed away in ICU, I was sitting alone in the ICU waiting room at about 7.30 a.m. after pulling an all-nighter out of worry. I'm sure I looked like a complete mess to the hospital staff and other visitors. My eyes puffy from crying and definitely looking a lot younger than 19 years old. A woman I had never met or seen before passed by the ICU waiting room while glancing in, before coming back a few minutes later with a cola and giving it to me. I'll never forget her handing me the cola while looking like she was going to cry, and just telling me that I looked like I needed a little kindness in my life. She left after that and I never saw her again or even got her name, but I hope she's doing well wherever she is. Story 34 
I went to South Africa for my gap year after school. I had saved all year for a month's trip, and it was the first time I'd traveled alone. Culture shock, anxiety, and the realization of how far I'd come hit me, and I ended up crying in the bathroom of Johannesburg Airport. A kind lady noticed me and asked me if I was okay. I sobbed and said I just couldn't believe I was on the opposite side of the world from home, and I'd worked so hard to get there I just felt overwhelmed, and she gave me a hug and said some kind words I can't fully remember, but I felt much better after she'd been kind enough to check that I was okay. Story 35 I was a soldier in Afghanistan, and for a week or so we were at 10,500 feet in December. It was the coldest I've ever been. Brutally, miserably, dangerously cold. We were occupying this village, searching people's homes and patrolling during the day to higher altitudes looking for Bin Laden et al. One night I was on guard outside this man's home, and he came out at 3 a.m., probably to pee. When he saw me shivering, he went back inside and made me tea and came out with a blanket and draped it over me. I was a foreign soldier occupying his country, occupying his village, and making them let us search their homes. My misery was far from being his problem. His generosity and kindness was incredibly underserved and touching. It's also very typical of the Afghan people in general. Story 36. When I was in my early 20s, I was pretty broke. I would usually eat at my dad's house when I could get over there, but otherwise it was usually ramen or something else cheap. One of my buddies would come scoop me up and take me to the gas station to get something to drink and then take me to Taco Bell to get some volcano tacos. We'd cruise back to his house and he'd always have a blunt rolled and ready. We'd breathe and eat and he'd bring me back home. He did this every week until I got some money saved up and I could afford my own Taco Bell. He never asked me if I could pay him back and he never expected anything. Thanks, Kelso. Story 37. I had just ended a three-year relationship in a city I knew nobody in. Started a new job and worked on my birthday. I had hit it off with the lady who trained me, and when the HR manager stopped by and wished me a happy birthday, she seemed surprised I never mentioned it. I explained I was in a bad place intellectually and just told her I didn't feel like celebrating. On her lunch break, she went out and got me a single fancy cupcake from the grocery store up the street. She barely knew me. I literally clutched that cupcake in the break room and sobbed. Plot twist. Her son ended up working with us a few months later. We dated, got pregnant, and I in return gave her a grandson. Story 38. I was about eight or nine and went to the convenience store down the road from me to buy some chocolate and slurpees for myself and younger brother. I collected all the money I had to buy an assortment, but when I went to the counter, I came up short a few dollars. I was choked and kind of embarrassed I was holding up the line, but before I could choose what to leave behind, an old man slapped a fiver beside me saying something like, I got you, little buddy. I was so thankful and have never forgotten about that man. I've done it a few times myself now just because I remember that feeling so well. Story 39. When I was 26, broke living on my own and developed a reaction to latex and non-latex rubber band. Still don't know why. Anyway, I decided to get the implant birth control and went to the family planning clinic. I was filling out the forms where you input your salary and insurance info. I didn't have insurance, and once the medical assistant looked over my form, she realizes my income was $200 slash year over the limit where they provide full coverage assistance, meaning I wasn't eligible for their financial assistance and was going to have to pay about $1,000 hour of pocket just for the birth control, not including an exam I needed. She very quietly explained this to me, and then in her normal voice said, Oh, let me get you a new form. Wink, wink. She gave me a blank one so I could refill it out and list my income at what they considered to be the limit for assistance. Because of this, I was able to get the physical exam I needed badly, including medication and a three-year birth control implant for free. I was living paycheck to paycheck, barely scraping by working full-time and overtime, wearing worn-out clothes and shoes with holes. That woman was a freaking lifesaver for me. Story 40. I was a week in New York. Middle-aged tourist from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. I like to travel the subway all the way till the end, just to get to know the city. One day, I apparently ended up in a Spanish-speaking neighborhood. While walking there, a woman bumped into me and started yelling at me in Spanish. Of course I yelled back in Dutch. This caught her to her surprise and we both started laughing. I noticed she did some grocery shopping and had some vegetables I had never seen before. So I asked her about them in English, and before I knew it, I was invited for dinner. I accepted and insisted I buy the wine and beer. I had a great evening and met a large Spanish family. Best evening in New York. Even better than the 4th of July evening or the Yankees-Mets baseball game. Story 41. 
Christmas Eve, stuck alone in a country waiting for a government office to open so I could get the magic stamp that made me officially legal. I had barely enough money for the stamp, the bus back home to the other foreign country I was staying in for work, and a cup of tea. That's it. The government office decided to take a four-hour lunch break, so I was nursing my 25 CT when the waiter brought me out a whole lunch. I was super stressed and in my crappy pigeon said, no money. No money. And he said, it's Christmas. It was probably four dollars worth of food, but I have thought about that guy ever since. Story 42. I had just had my first baby and I went to pick up some shopping. My daughter needed feeding and had to have a medicated formula, so I went to the cafe area of the supermarket and was juggling the crying baby, powdered milk, boiling water, cooled down water, and I just couldn't do it. An older lady came over and asked if she could help at all. I remember being so incredibly grateful because I really, really needed help. I cried. I said, yes, please. She held the baby while I made the milk and then started to feed her the bottle so I could go grab some cake from the cafe as I hadn't eaten all day. Just something about that moment I'll never forget. I learned from then that it is always okay to ask for help, and there will always be people who want to help. It's my go-to advice for new parents now. Story 43. When I was working at a vet hospital as an assistant, one day, when I was opening up, before any doctors were present, a woman was frantically knocking at the door with her cat. He was pretty old and looked in rough shape. She was very concerned as he came home from being outside coughing and vomiting. He was stable, so I made comfortable arrangements for him and reassured her until the doctor came. Her cat ended up being diagnosed with asthma and did well. Every time she came in to get food or meds after that, she was always very nice and friendly with me. I got to know her a bit. Her and her husband have three elderly cats and run an insurance company together. We would chat whenever she came in. One day we were chatting, and she asked if I was excited for the upcoming Christmas holidays. I made a comment about how I wasn't really because holidays are stressful with the added pressure of gift buying on top of paying rent, etc., but that I was looking forward to time off. A few days later, I was eating lunch in the break room, and my co-worker dropped off a card. I asked who it was from. She wasn't sure, but said it was a client, and she had asked the card be given to me. I rushed to the front to see if she was still there, but she had left. It was a card from the woman with a note about how she wished me happy holidays and appreciated me being there when she was stressed, and $300. I nearly cried. I never expected this kindness from an acquaintance, and it came at a time when I was struggling financially and really did help me out. The next time I saw her thanked her profusely, but insisted she take it back, as we're not supposed to accept tips, but she refused and said it was a gift, and she was happy to help. I work elsewhere now and haven't seen her in a few years, but think of her often. Story 44. I am now required to do my job from I home, permanently, which meant disabling my gaming PC and setting up my workstation at my only desk. My agoraphobia has been triggered by the COVID crisis, and gaming is how I get a little zen. I am also disabled, and my available activities are limited. This was causing a depression and anxiety spiral. I reached out to my brother about an issue I was having with my internet connection, and we caught up a bit. I told him about my lack of gaming, and that I was planning on getting a switch when the prices stopped being jacked up. A little while later, he sends me a message letting me know my new switch should arrive by my birthday. I love that magnificent jerk. He saved my sanity. Story 45. I was visiting New Orleans for Mardi Gras with a couple friends, and we were very poorly prepared for how hungover and hungry we were going to be our first full day there. We were standing in the freezing rain at 10 a.m. to see the crew of Zulu and had not eaten yet and were dying of hunger with no food around. I looked over at a median where a large group of people were BBBing and our stomachs were rumbling so hard that my friends nominated me to go offer some money for a plate. I walked over sheepishly and asked an older black woman if I could please buy some food for me and my friends, and she said, Honey, you and your friends can come and eat whatever you want for free. This is New Orleans and she happily began walking us around showing us everything they had. It was the best meal and the most needed kindness I had ever experienced and forever makes me love that city. Story 46. This girl in my HS class who found out I made art, and despite me trying to keep her distant, she gradually got me out of my shell. It's because of her that I also met the love of my life years later. Her reaching out to become friends pulled me out of a dark void that surely would have been my end after high school. I love that girl like a sister. Never got back in contact with her, and I later found out some ex-friends of mine took advantage of her sixiely. I regret never being able to get her out of that situation, 
Haven't forgiven myself for it. Edit. Thanks for your kind, guys. You're all really sweet, C. I'm going to look her up online. Hopefully we can reconnect. Story 47. Not an act of kindness shown to me, but told to me about a family member. Just over two years ago, my nan passed away. She was a single mother to my dad and my uncle, worked three jobs to keep a roof over Thayer heads. I spent most Friday nights and Saturdays with her during my childhood. She was fun, lived for being around her grandchildren, and luckily enough, she had a good few years with my son, who was her shadow whenever we visited before she passed away. Whenever my dad or my uncle would visit, she would always bag up groceries for them to take home. It was something she did since they moved out of her house back in Thier late teens and would not let them say no. After she passed, I was filling my car at the local petrol station, and behind the till was a woman who was a mother of someone I went to school with, and incidentally, my dad also works on Thier site as a cleaner. I asked her if my dad had been okay as he carried on working during this time, and she looked at me weirdly and said, yeah, why? And I explained what happened to my nan. She instantly burst into tears. Turns out that back when she was a kid, her family lived next door. They were in the same poor financial situation as my nan was, and also her dad was a raging alcoholic, and there was no food in the house. It all went on drink. Even though my nan was struggling making ends meet in her own household, she also made sure that the next-door neighbor's kids were fed and watered, and that they were clean and presentable for school. Bar school dinners, this would sometimes be Thire only meal of the day. I know from the amazing memories I had of her growing up just how brilliant she was, but to find out after she passed away just how generous and caring she was to people in the same need as herself just made me think so much more of her. People like this are few and far between right now. Story 48. I once was having a really bad week. My money was tight. My depression was terrible. Work was awful. I, uh, as behind on bills and I just wanted one thing to go right. Well, even though money was bad, I have a problem with stress eating. Yes, I'm working on it. And I was pretty much in tears as I walked up to an A.W. Just wanted a meal as I hadn't eaten that day yet. This was evening. Well, I order and go to pay. And when I look for my wallet, I realize it wasn't on me. I nearly had a panic attack as I had not prepared for this interaction to go this way and was immensely embarrassed. A girl behind B stepped up and put it on her bill. I remember trying to find the words to say thank you because that was so nice and I was still incredibly overwhelmed. I haven't seen her since, but thank you. It was less than $10, but meant a lot to me that week, and still does. I wish I could pay you back somehow as a thank you. Story 49. I've shared this story before, but I'll never forget this small act of kindness. When I was a kid, we didn't have a lot of money, so we often shopped at thrift stores. What I loved about that was that you could get 10 books for a dollar. So I would plant myself in front of the book section and make piles of which one I wanted to get, and then decided after I'd gone through them all. One day an older lady saw me sitting with my piles and asked if I liked to read. I told her I did and showed her a few of the books I found that I liked. She smiled and then pulled a dollar out of her purse, handed it to me and said, Promise me that you'll keep reading. I was so happy and immediately stood up and said that I would. She smiled and walked away and I went back to my piles, able to pick out an extra ten books to take home. It was just a small act of kindness for her. But for me, having a random stranger encourage my love of reading and making me promise to never stop definitely had a lot to do with my continued love of reading. This was probably over 20 years ago, but I still think of her whenever I buy a new book. Story 50. When I was in the Army, we did a military exercise that took place in the woods where we had to explore and observe enemy movement, which lasted four days. Days went like this wake up, March for six, seven hours, do small assignments and build small outposts with two watch posts, two man watching each night. On the third night, I and another guy had the night shift. You basically stare into utter blackness. You can't use light, otherwise you expose your location. I was tired, flipping hungry and cold. Then my other watch buddy crawled from his post to mine, five, six meter, yes with gear and all, and whisper, you want half of my Mars bars? That was 2008 October and I still get a great feeling of gratitude and kindness when I think about it. Story 51. Years ago, I was riding with a friend that was notorious for running out of gas. Sure enough, we ran out of gas in the middle of nowhere. It was dark, and we were both very scared. An older man and his wife stopped to help us. They were in a van and offered to take us to a gas station. We were terrified, but not many choices, so we got in the van. They were such nice people and drove us to get gas, and he even paid for the gas brought us back to my friend's car and put the gas in her tank. They wouldn't accept any payment. He just said they had three daughters, 
and they hoped that someone would do the same for their girls if they broke down in the middle of nowhere. Story 52. Living on my own for the first time in San Antonio, Texas, several states away from family. Made stupid missteps like most do their first time on their own. Spent a bit too much. Forgot to balance certain costs. Didn't think things were that expensive, etc. I was already living paycheck to paycheck, but comfortably enough. Four months in a row, however, due to reduced hours, I got all needed bills covered with only $1, $10.40 left for food and gas. I was too proud to get on assistance and felt like I would be a failure if I did. Got over that since. Only had a bare basic internet plan and phone with an unlimited texting plan, 2002, 03, smartphones were only just starting to be a thing, and mine wasn't one. I went to the store thinking I had $60 and would treat myself to stocking up on a few pieces of meat to throw in the freezer for future use. I was so, oh, no sick of McCheese, hot dogs, eggs, and ramen. Was super careful with pricing and taxes. Got to the register and my card was declined. I stepped aside, long line behind me, and called my bank. I was negative $4.36. I was trying not to cry as I told the cashier I was sorry, but I had to put it back. The lady at the register at the time said, Nuh-uh, gimme, and grabbed the handbasket for me. She added it onto her order, ignoring my protests. Like, she literally full-blown ignored me until we were walking out of the store. Poor cashier kept looking between us like, what's happening? But run it up at the woman's insistence. Honey, I've been there. You need to eat and be strong to work at pulling yourself up. Someone did this for me once, so I'm doing it for you. All I ask is that you pay it forward, even if it takes years. Oh my God, hun, stop crying. You're a strong, powerful, beautiful woman. Don't ever forget that or let the world forget it. No, seriously, stop crying. It's getting embarrassing. I hope I've done you proud since my Texan fairy godmother.